Well, we will see him at the Olympics next year in the K4, but just mentioning there that the 200 is his favourite event, and you know, it is tough. Riley, I mean, you you were in a distance that got taken away out of the Olympics. It is a hard thing. You've got to change your training. You've got to change your focus. You know, you spent all your life training as a K2 1000 pattern, and all of a sudden you're changing to K2 500. You've spent all your life doing K1 200. Now, all of a sudden, you've got to try and become a K4 500 paddler. It's, it's a big change, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a massive change. I mean, I spent my whole upbringing training for K4 1000, and then after 2016, changed the event to 500, and it's quite a big adjustment to alter that training style and become a shorter distance paddler but um i think it's it's quite fun especially going from thousands to 500s i don't know how it is for the 200 guys going out to 500 but um it's certainly quite nice going to half your distance uh, well, actually we'll come back to that but i was going to say one of the great things is is that it does provide an opportunity for guys who are your like i know with the australian team you had a couple of real workhorses there over the 1,000, and you threw in a couple of the 200-metre the sprint guns yeah. into the boat as well, and it was sort of really a, a really interesting combination. Yeah. Well, does this man need any introduction? Sebastian Brendel. The crowd loves Sebastian Brendel. The most successful canoe paddler of the modern era, a three-time Olympic gold medalist. But I don't know whether he's going to match it with these young guns today because there are some very, very good paddlers. Here's one of them, Richter Glasno from Poland. Uh, he will be up there, but um, Martin Fuchser, so often the bridesmaid, yeah. so often the groomsman, never the groom, is today going to be his day. It would mean so much to him, I think, to yeah. become a world champion, but this is the man they'll all be watching. Catelyn Chirilla. He's just really taken the world by storm over the last couple of years. Balas Adolf from Hungary, great marathon paddler. He'll, uh, he will challenge for sure for a medal. And, well, this man here, he is only, he is only the Olympic defending champion. But is he, is he at his best? I don't know. I've got to question it. He'll be holding something back for next year. He's quite the entertainer. I'm sure he's going to make a race of it. Sergei Tsinoski, of course, bronze medalist at the Olympics. What a quality field we have here. And Connor Fitzpatrick from Canada. As Let's see if Sebastian can pull out one more race. He's the king of these waters. He's done it so many times before. Let's see if his experience is going to pay dividends again today. But. Oh, there he is. He'll have the crowd behind him. I, I know that there was quite a bit of competition amongst the German team for who would race this this event. Conrad Schiebner, of course, is very, very effective over 1,000. But in the end, they gave the nod to Sebastian Brendel. Martin Fuchser. He's a workhorse. He yeah. competes in every event. He works hard. He's he's a f loves the 500, but would so dearly love to become the 1,000 meter world champion. But Catalan Chirilla, the Romanian, he's just been so strong mm. over ever since Tokyo. Really, he's the the reigning world champion, and will be the man to beat. It feels funny saying that when you've got the Olympic champion here, but I just what I saw Riley in the opening couple of days here, I, I don't know that Isaacias from Brazil is at his very, very best. Maybe maybe he's keeping his powder dry. Maybe we're going to see something special here. Oh, this is going to be special. It really is. Now, I should mention, uh, in the C1 Men's 1000, there is five Olympic quotas up for grabs so the top five boats the top five boats here providing they're not in a c2 as well the top five boats will earn tickets for their country to paris next year so keep that in mind folks watching at home or wherever you might be watching we're not just watching who might win who might become world champion but we're also looking to see who are going to be the top five boats to cross the line and to get themselves or their country a ticket for next year at the Paris Olympics. Look at the big man go. He's revved up for this one. He is. He's uh, two from the top there, Sebastian Brendel. Right next to him, though, Viktor Gloznov from Poland and Martin Fuchser from the Czech Republic. And in the middle of the field, Katlin Chirilla from Romania. And uh, down three from the bottom, you have the reigning Olympic champion, Izakios, who is... Going out nice and strong as well. So at this stage, they're just 
eyeing off their opponents at the moment. Uh, is a Kios from Brazil out in front. Going with him is Chirilla from Romania. Quite a strategical race, this one over a 1,000 metres. And they can see each other too, Riley. The way they're facing, they can see each other. They're facing each other. They can see where they are. And it looks like also uh, the Polish paddler, Glasno, is up challenging for the lead. So heading down now, there's your split times for the first 250. And it's Romania just in front of Brazil. He looks so smooth at the moment. It really does, but it's a really good race there in the middle of the field. You can see Fuchs are coming through as well. Maybe even Fuchs are moving into the lead now from the Czech Republic. I think the Polish paddler Glasno has taken over. Grendel right on their collar, though. You have Glasno from Poland in front. Maybe Fuchs are challenging him for the lead. Grendel sticking with him. Chirilla, the Romanian, just maybe taking a breather at the moment, keeping something in the tank for later on. And Izakias from Brazil is also just biding their time. It's really a very even race across the field, isn't it? And Ballas Adolf from Hungary also starting to, to come through. He's a marathon paddler. Is the is dropping off a little bit though, I have to say. Quite interesting. I'm just noticing the conditions at the moment. The wind is swirling around quite a bit and this last 50 metres has kind of gone to a bit of a headwind. So I'm wondering if some of the guys are trying to get out in front just to kind of guess, get in front of the, the headwind and, and sort of attack that before everyone else does. So this is not just a race for the World Championship, it is a race for Olympic quotas. So at the moment we're looking there, there's one, two, three, four, five, plus over at the top of the course, the Ukrainian. So we've got six people racing for five spots, really, at the moment. But it's Viktor Glasnow from Poland. He is out in front. Fuxa into second. Cirilla sitting back in third. Grendel trying to hold on. Try to hold on. He'll be hoping the crowd can give him a lift as he gets down towards the grandstand. But at the moment, it's Glasnow. And now we see Chirilla starting to dig deep. Glasnow in front. Fuchs a second. I think Izakias is gone. Martin's just hugging that lane, trying to hold on to this Polish here. I wonder if he's got something in the back end here. So it's Glasnow from Poland in front. Looks like he's pulled up alongside of him. Martin Fuchser, is this his going to be his day? He's waited, he's waited, and he's waited. Always the groomsman, never the groom. Is today the day that Martin Fuchser is beginning, going to become a world champion? Chirilla is the big danger. Chirilla is the one flying home. It's Fuchser in front. Glasnow holding on to second. Chirilla lifting. Brendel lifting. Sebastian Brendel, the veteran. He's trying to get up there in the medal position. Martin Fuchser in front from the Czech Republic. Glasnow having a brave race, holding on to second. Chirilla going up and down in the one spot. Brendel is moving through. It's Chirilla, though, chasing down Fuchser. Fuchser in front. He's going to be a world champion. Martin Fuchser, it's your day, my man. Chirilla second. And, ooh, did Brendel get a bronze medal? I think Brendel just snuck in for third. That's unbelievable. Wow. Wow, he powered home. There were some big strokes happening that last 200 metres, but Martin, going through that last 200 metre, those start gates there, he just pulled the trigger and went for it. Don't be, don't be misled. Do not be misled by those facial expressions. This will mean so much to Martin Fuchser. <laughs> Sebastian Brendel, yeah. he's pretty happy. He's pretty happy. You know, there's a lot of people doubting Sebastian Brendel. There's a lot of people suggesting that maybe it's time for him to move up into the commentary box. But I'm pretty certain he's got the bronze. Martin Fuchser, he's not happy that they're playing the German song when he's world champion, but you are in Duisburg, Martin. Sebastian Brendel, a brave race, and I can confirm now that Sebastian Brendel has got the bronze medal by... Not a lot. By 0.2 of a second, basically. Which is... And going through that last 250 split, he's made up almost two seconds yeah. over the Polish... Well, can I tell you something very interesting here? Look at this lunge here. Oh! Wow. Doesn't get much closer than that. And he's waving the crowd ears. Thanking them for all the support. It's a great scene down here, folks. So you can't see it at home, but he's come down here in front of the grandstand. And it is great to see 
There he is. That's Sebastian Brendel. He's down here in front of the crowd. And they are rising to their feet. They are standing on their feet. They are giving Sebastian Brendel a standing ovation in the crowd here in Duisburg. They know their legends. I feel a little bit sorry for Martin Fuchser because he is the world champion. <laughs> and, you know, it's the first time for Martin Fuchser to be a world champion, but everybody's talking about Sebastian Brendel. Yeah. He's, they're both these paddlers are such icons of canoe paddling. And, you know, they've raced against each other for so long. 